welcome back to TBRD. Today on the vlog, I'm going to be talking about all things engine braking. What it is, how it impacts the bike, and why it happens. Then I'm going to go ahead, send it back to myself in the garage to show you how you can actually program the amount of engine brake on this 2020 BMW S1000XR. And then later in the week, time and weather permitting, I'm going to do a short demonstration that I may try to get edited into this video. So, when you're learning to drive, uh, if you're driving a stick shift or more specifically since we're motor vlogging on our motorcycles, when you're uh, learning to ride your motorcycle, any good instructor is going to let you know and inform you that there's three safe ways to slow down your bike. You've got your front brake, you've got your rear brake, and you've got your engine brake. Engine braking occurs when you close the throttle and the bike is going to decelerate and slow more rapidly because of the forces of the engine braking than if you just put it in neutral or pull it in the clutch and coast it. And this is happening because 15 to 25 percent of your gross horsepower in your engine is actually being utilized to overcome friction uh, in the engine, this is specifically uh, the pistons and the rings. So you've got on a high-powered bike like this, or other more high-powered bikes, somewhere between 35 and 50 horsepower that's being utilized to overcome friction, and that's happening every time you close the throttle, you're feeling that engine braking effect. When you couple that with uh, aggressive, high-performance brakes, specifically the front brake, you're getting a lot of shift onto the front of the bike, which is loosening, or I should say lightening up the rear end, which is going to result potentially in the back end sliding out or even hopping up and down and kind of chattering and destabilize the bike. If you've watched MotoGP, especially in the early days, uh, you would have seen a lot of this. So what's actually happening is when we close our throttle, the, uh, there, there's basically a vacuum being created because the pistons are no longer able to take in air. And because of that, there's a, a vacuum and it causes a rapid decrease or a braking effect, which we call engine braking, on the rear, on the rear wheel. At this point, you may be saying to yourself, well, of course, Josh, but that's why they've created slipper clutches. And yes, you would be partially right, maybe, maybe entirely right. However, I say partially because uh, necessity, as they say, is the, the mother of innovation. And so slipper clutches really, like most things automotive or motorcycle, uh, were developed out of necessity at the racing level. So you go back into the early 1980s, and that's really where you started to see the slipper clutch uh, being implemented uh, in order to try to control some of those engine braking forces. And uh, that's kind of the origin of today's slipper clutch and slipper assist clutches that are, are fairly standard on high performance motorcycles. However, if you watched much MotoGP in the early 2000s, it was right around that time uh, that, you know, these huge high compression engines and these massively strong stopping power of carbon brakes, the forces between those two things uh, were too much for the slipper clutches. So they needed some assistance and essentially it was that necessity that led to uh, the creation of these engine braking controls. So we are going to head back to my garage to take a little bit more about those engine braking controls and look at how you can actually program the amount of engine brake on this 2020 BMW S1000XR. All right, we are back in the garage and I'm gonna take a couple of minutes to show you how to adjust the engine braking control on this 2020 BMW S1000XR. So we are on the home screen currently, but before I get into showing you how to make the actual adjustment, I wanted to talk a little bit 
uh, in more detail about the dynamic engine brake and control and how it works. The purpose of the dynamic engine brake control uh, is to safely prevent unstable riding conditions that are related uh, to the excess drag and torque at the rear wheel, uh, as I shared. So really depending on the road conditions and the riding dynamic, uh, excess drag torque can make, uh, make the rear end slip or kind of chatter and hop up and down. And this can uh, severely impede riding stability. So the dynamic engine braking control is going to limit this slip at the rear, rear wheel uh, really to a safe set point um, that's dependent on uh, the riding mode and the angle. So much like uh, traction control, the dynamic engine brake control compares the wheel circumferential velocities uh, of the front and rear wheel. So with the aid of more information on the angle, the dynamic engine brake control can determine the slip or the stability reserve at the back end of the bike at the rear wheel. Uh, if the slip then uh, es essentially then if the slip exceeds uh, respective limited values, the engine torque is going to be increased slightly uh, by opening the throttle valves. Uh, therefore, the slip is going to be reduced and you are going to gain stability, which is, the, which is the key, right? We want the bike to remain stable. So adjusting, uh, adjusting that on this bike, the engine braking control, you simply from your home screen, if you pan out here, take a look down. Once again, we're here on the handlebar selection and hit down on menu. When I do so, I'm going to get to settings and click down again. Click over on your wheel and vehicle settings. I'm going to scroll down. Oops, I was hitting the button. I'm going to scroll down to dynamic riding mode. And then in there, you're going to see engine brake. I had this cranked up uh, for the video. So I have it on the maximum engine brake effect. That is the road setting. You can uh, turn this down and get it into dynamic or average engine brake effect or minimum engine brake effect. And those are your three options on your engine brake. So we are going to take a look here at what happens, uh, actually what engine braking looks like and do a, a very brief demonstration. So we're going to send it back out onto the road. All right, we are in a parking lot, not the best parking lot to do this in, but we're going to give it a shot. We're going to get the bike up to 30 miles an hour in second gear and just pull the clutch right at these cones and you can see how far the bike coasts on its own. So let's get it in a second. We're in second. There's the cones up ahead. We're going 30 and pull the clutch. Might have been 29. But you can see we're going to run out of space here as we get into this wet leafy mess in this top parking lot. Would have run all the way up. I had to hit the brakes there. Be careful on these wet leaves. Now we're going to go back. <laughs> we'll slide there. We're going to do the same thing. Except this time, instead of pulling the clutch in second gear, we're going to downshift. Now, do that, and we'll watch the engine braking and see how much shorter the stopping distance is. I will not hit the brakes at all. We'll just get it in the second gear, and then we will click it down with the quick shifter in the first. Right there are cones. There's second gear. Let's get it up to the right speed. There we go. All right, so I kicked it into gear. Look at that. That is your engine brake effect. All right, so you can see what a difference I didn't hit any brakes there. That was just putting it down in gear. And as we talked about at the top of this vlog, what you're seeing there is remember that 15 to 25 percent of your gross horsepower on these machines is used to overcome the friction, mainly the pistons and the rings. And that is the engine brake effect. Let's take a look at it one more time. We'll go a little faster this time. 
Let's just lug it through here in second gear. All right, here we go. Let's go a little faster. Watch what happens. We'll go through 40. Boom, kick it down in the first. And look at that. Even as I get to this top parking lot, that engine brake is going to almost bring you to a stop. Let's go back through one more time. Let's see what happens if we go through at about that same speed. Around 40 miles an hour in second gear. Let's see what happens when you just pull the clutch. And it'll give you a pretty good indication how much brake this engine, or any engine, is providing you. And that's it, we're about the same speed as we were. And pull the clutch. Look at that, we're rolling up here. We're still going 30 as we hit the top part of this parking lot. I gotta get on the brakes. Burr, in this wet leafy mess. Don't wanna drop the bike. Alright. So there you have it. You can clearly see the impact of the engine brake. So let's rejoin our ride home to send this thing off. So that's going to do it for this week's vlog. If you uh, feel like I missed something or have additional uh, points that you would like to make, drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. As always, I'd ask that you like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hopefully you found this vlog informative. We will see you next week. As I like to say, until that time, keep the throttle back, rubber down, and enjoy the ride.